Hey everyone, today I want to show you how it turns scheduling chaos into scheduling magic using Init and Google Calendar, Atio and Telegram. Uh, I think most of the fun is always to see the demo, so let's just jump right into the demo. Here I'm in the chat with my personal AI bot. Um, so let's go ahead and make our first request and say schedule an online meeting with Maximus. Um, and normally right for an online meeting, we would need the email, start and end date. So let's see uh, how the bot responds. And as you can see, it's pretty cool. Um, in the V0 I had, um, I actually had to always, kind of like always say everything, the name and the email, right? But this is pretty useless and not that useful. So I actually added the kind of like functionality to search through Artio of all my contacts and find the right person. And, and this is what just happened, right? So as I'll show you later, there were actually two Maximus in my, <laughs> uh, fake Maximus in my, in my uh, Artio. And uh, he went ahead and actually asked me who I want to write. Um, so let's say Musterman and see if the bot needs any other information um, to schedule or if he tries to schedule and uh, runs into an error. Um, and like, yeah, as expected, um, and, and I think that's the real magic about agents. Um, they're kind of able to handle with ambiguous information, ask for feedback, try and fail, and kind of like turn around and still continue the work. Um, so he found the right person, but he still needs the date, start and end time uh, for the meeting and also description. So uh, let's say it will be a coffee chat this Friday from 9 to 10 a.m. So um, with this, he should actually have all the information to schedule the meeting. So let's see if he's able to successfully schedule the meeting. And as we can see, pretty cool. Um, he scheduled this Friday from 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, coffee chat with uh, the right person, hopefully. Um, to verify, let's jump into the Google Calendar and refresh. And as you can see actually here, um, it's scheduled. So uh, after this, let's jump into implementation and see how the agent works under the hood. It. Um, so right, I said three. I, I sent three messages, which are here: one, two, and three. Um, so let's start. Right, first one was about just scheduling a meeting with Maximus, um, and basically in the agent, um, what I defined here is one: the chat input, schedule an online meeting with Maximus. Um, but then I gave a lot of context uh, around that. Basically, your routing assistant delegates incoming telling your message to specialized agents. Um, I gave it the current time and the chat ID current time uh, that becomes later quite important, right? Because I said uh, this Friday. Um, so that's how he was able to know um, what that meant based on the current time and the date. And um, based on that request, it chose to jump into the private calendar. Um, so the private calendar is pretty much just a tool um, basically assigned to my private Gmail uh, account. Um, and the description is it should always call this tool to schedule events. Uh, for my email address and if no specific name for the calendar is given uh, please use this calendar so this way I don't always have to say use my private calendar use my work calendar if I don't say anything it's by default the private calendar um, and kind of like one cool thing I like about in and, and the agent feature is um, it kind of like really coolly shows the the logs and the timeline of how the agent worked uh, so first it loaded the memory variables uh, then went Gemini went to uh, to choose that it wants to call the private calendar. And uh, now what's pretty cool here is um, let's jump into the sub workflow. Um, so in it, and you can pretty much attach um, sub workflows as, tool, as tools to agents. And uh, this is what happened here. I, um, because the scheduling is so complicated, I chose to build a whole another agent around it. Um, so this agent basically has a bit more of a system front um, with some more rules around what it should do about the first name if it's not given uh, some meeting settings the response format and so on like setting a default uh, 30 minutes a specific time zone uh, the calendar that is being used um, to to give it as much context as possible um, and for this particular call as we can see from the logs it actually went and chose to search audio contacts um, because we just gave it the name maximus right um, and this is how it came up with all the data um, that audio uh, responded. And defining these tools is actually pretty simple. You don't need to be a coding expert. Uh, all you need to do is pretty much down here, uh, define the API call. And you can see here, um, this is kind of like the most important part. 
is here I defined the name and kind of explained that this is the name of the person to search for. Uh, so the LM kind of like fills this name Maximus out by itself and is able to then find kind of like the two matches, right? And if we go back to the AI agents and to the logs um, after the call, um, this is here what we'll see in the output. There are two contacts. Um, and then kind of like jumping back to the main agent after he reported uh, which one of these it should be. Uh, let's jump to the second call. And for the second call, all I gave him was just the name Mustaman. And here we can kind of really see why memory is such an important feature for agents. Um, with the memory um, and by loading it here, uh, Gemini is actually able to recognize um, that this was about the, the scheduling event. Uh, without the memory, would have had zero ideas what I meant just by, by calling the name. Um, so then again, right, as we can see, it's kind of the same happening. It, it jumps into private calendar, uh, calls the tool again to check one more time. And then kind of like in the final response um, that you can see here in the private calendar, uh, here it says, okay, I scheduled a meeting with Maximus Musman for this Friday. Um, if we check the subflow, uh, we can see that here it actually succeeded. So it fell in between. Um, that's why it asked me for the description, start and end time before realizing it needs that. And once it had that, you can see here, it uh, called the Google Meetings calendar. And again, using that is pretty simple. Uh, we can use the super handy from AI function to pretty much uh, kind of tell it what we need. And the AI fills it by itself. And yeah, this way um, we have a really cool scheduling agent. So the kind of idea behind this demo was to show you a few features of like how to build um, agentic workflows with N8N. If you would like the, the template, uh, comment below. I'm, I'm happy to send it to you uh, yeah, via direct message. And yeah, I think one more time, obviously this was now um, a very, you know, piece together request, just saying the name, not giving the date and so on. But obviously would it say schedule a meeting with Maximus uh, Mustaman uh, Friday, 9 a.m. to a.m. Uh, it would have been able to do it in one shot, right? But the cool thing is once it gets stuck, uh, it can heal itself. Um, if I'm not sure yet, if I get something, I can pretty much still continue, finish up the scheduling. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this demo. I have a lot of other cool videos coming up soon. And yeah, uh, excited and happy flow engineering.